Welcome to Siena, Italy. We are standing in the Palazzo Publico, Siena's town hall. And there are two interesting things about what we're looking at right now. One are these incredible frescoes covering every wall of this room. These were painted by Ambrogio Lorenzetti in 1338 to 1339. And they are one of the masterpieces of Italian Renaissance fresco work. The second interesting thing is that we're viewing this place within virtual reality. I'm wearing a VR headset and I'm holding two controllers in my hands that are tracked in real time. I'll talk about each of these points over the course of this video. The first being the art historical background of this space, and the second being the technology that makes this possible and why that's important for art historical education and research. As I said, we're standing in Siena within the Palazzo Publico, which was the town hall of the Republic of Siena. And specifically, we're within a room called the Sala de Nove, which means the Hall of the Nine. And that refers to the nine governing officials for whom this was the meeting space. And that is linked to the scenes depicted on the walls of this room, which are effectively a pictorial guidebook for the governing of a city. These paintings, these frescoes, were sort of an instruction manual to the, the government of the Republic on how they should govern the city. So for example, directly in front of us, we see the allegory of good government, where we have justice, peace, temperance, magnanimity, and these other sort of allegorical figures that exemplify the qualities of a good government. On the right-hand side, there's a depiction of a city and countryside, and these are the effects of good government upon the city. So a city ruled by a good government has prosperous shops, uh, people dancing in the streets. The town folk go out into the countryside to farm and hunt. In contrast to all of this, on the opposite wall, we have the allegories of bad government and the effects of bad government upon the city. If we move under the allegories of bad government, we can see cruelty, tyranny in the center, who sits in this sort of throne with his feet upon a goat, division. And these was avarice, vainglory, these are the exemplify the, the traits of a bad government. Likewise, the effects of bad government upon the city show a city in disrepair. The shops are falling apart and in the streets, rather than dancing and having wedding processions, in this city, the city ruled by a bad government, people are being assaulted in the street and robbed. And in the countryside, warring armies traverse the landscape and distant cities are on fire. And all of this is presided over by a sort of ghastly witch-like figure that says fear above it. So the artist, Ambrosio Lorenzetti was, was really showing the 
rulers of Siena what he thought a government should do for its people, and that is protect them and, and foster them. And he contrasts that with uh, these vi apocalyptic visions of a city ruled by bad government. Now, this virtual environment that I'm standing in right now is a highly accurate 3D scan of the actual Sala de Nova in Siena. In 2017 and 2018, I had the idea to create these 3D scans of various uh, important Renaissance spaces uh, with the idea that undergraduate and graduate level Renaissance art history classes could use these um, 3D models uh, in either within their class or as part of the uh, syllabus. And in 2016, when the first sort of true virtual reality headset was released, the Oculus Rift, along with the HTC Vive, um, consumer level virtual reality really became a possibility. And the quality of, of standing in one of these virtual spaces is very much like the actual experience of standing in the Sala de Nova in Siena. So this experience, this virtual experience, is really the next best thing to actually visiting Siena or Padova or Florence or Arezzo or, or any, any place that uh, one might have a, a highly accurate 3D scan of. And that is due to not only the visual fidelity of the, uh, the 3D scan, but also the, the accurate scale and the, the power of virtual reality to, to convey not only um, presence within space, but uh, this physical um, scale of a, of a place and of a space. So in addition to this feeling of presence and feeling of immersion within an accurate 3D space, there's also the other opportunities afforded by uh, virtual reality or, or digital technologies, which is, for example, augmenting the that the 3d scan so we can i can bring in placards that describe the scenes that we're looking at i can bring in for example simone martini's maesta which is this artwork that we see in front of us that's actually in the next room the sala della mapo mundo I can bring that into this room and we can view it in a, a much more personal and detailed way than if we were to be able to walk through this door and look at it high up on the wall uh, in the, the next room. So, in the Sala de Nove, what, what we're interested in, if one were to visit in person, would be these frescoes. But, as you can see, they are high above our heads. It's very hard to get a detailed look at any one of the scenes. And this is the same experience that one would have if one visited in person. The power of virtual reality is that we can improve upon reality by allowing the user to do things and perform actions that one would not be able to do in reality, uh, like sort of jump up and look at the frescoes at eye level. So here I've, I've placed this virtual scaffolding around the room so that we can 
stand up at eye level with uh, the fresco scenes and 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 really get a close up view of uh, of everything that's going on here. If we look at peace, we can see that she reclines on this bench along with the other allegories of good government. And she's reclining on a pillow under which is this dark object that upon closer inspection is a suit of armor. So this is another one of those instructions to the rulers of the city that even in times of peace, the Republic must always be prepared for military conflict. Likewise, we can go over to the countryside and get a better view of that a uh, witch-like figure that I mentioned earlier, labeled as Fear, Timor, and she's presiding over this uh, blasted landscape of ruins and, and warring armies, and she's holding a sword and in ragged clothes. In, if we contrast this to the other side, we can jump across the room and look at the corresponding figure, which is Securitas, who is a more angelic figure over the, the walls of the city. And she's actually holding a sort of little modello of a, a hanged man. Presumably that's a bandit or some ne'er-do-well that has been brought to justice. So I hope you've enjoyed this very brief uh, overview, not only of the the Sala de Nove, the, the Hall of the Nine, um, the art historical space here, but the technology that makes this uh, possible. And hopefully it's, it's clear that um, this gives you a, a much more embodied, uh, richer, experience than a simple textbook or slides or photographs. Um, so for art history students who w will no doubt learn about this in their classes, this space, yet will most likely never get to uh, visit it in person. Uh, this, I think, provides an invaluable um, experience that uh, I'm, I'm hoping to to make available and bring to to all sort of undergraduate and graduate level classes, uh, kind of virtual study abroad. So this is one of four scenes that I've created, and um, I'm hoping to do videos for the others. But uh, until then, ciao.